Fuddruckers. It was once a thriving hamburger chain with 200 locations across the US and globally. But in recent years, it's fallen on some hard times, with only 95 chains remaining worldwide. What happened? Why did a once popular restaurant chain suddenly start to decline? In this video, we'll investigate the alarming and eye-opening statistics that point the true picture of Fuddruckers' dramatic decline. Also, we'll discuss the top 10 reasons that dragged this fast food chain towards an epic fall. So stick around to the end to discover all of them and make sure to subscribe to the channel. The Origin and Growth Fuddruckers started by this guy named Philip J. Romano back in 1979. Set up shop in an old bank in San Antonio, Texas. Roman had a big idea. He thought the world needed a killer hamburger. And boom, Fuddruckers was born. They started with big, juicy hamburgers with meat ground fresh on the spot and buns baked right there. They'd pile those burgers high with tons of fresh sliced tomatoes, onions, lettuce, and let's not forget loads of cheese sauce. A burger lover's dream come true. Out of California, Fuddruckers wasn't playing small fry. Nope. They went head to head with the big shots, like Flaky Jake's. Especially in places like Northridge, they wanted to be the top dog in the burger game. And by 1988, Fuddruckers was rocking with a whopping 150 restaurants. But then, Philip J. Romano thought, Hey, I've done my bit for this burger dream and passed the torch. Fast forward, 1998. This older man named Michael Cannon took over. And later on, Magic Brands jumped into the ring. They made some waves. Like when they said, No visible pistols, please. Well, that caused quite a stir, especially in the gun-loving states. Fuddruckers boasted an enticing menu that spanned a range of delectable offerings. At the core of their offerings were those original Fudds burgers, available in various sizes, from the classic one-third pound to the colossal one-pound version. But they didn't limit themselves to just beef. There was the flavorful chicken delight for poultry enthusiasts and the crispy fisherman's catch for those seeking a seafood twist. For the adventurous palates, Fuddruckers presented the exotic adventure lineup, featuring burgers crafted from buffalo, elk, ostrich, and wild boar. One notable moment in their history was when they introduced a gigantic 29.6-pound burger, making headlines and showcasing their commitment to culinary innovation. Fuddruckers remained a go-to destination for burger lovers seeking diverse flavors and experiences. Do you remember back in 2006 when they first showed off that enormous 29.6 pound burger? Big, big, big. In other words, 18.5 inches in width and 8 inches in height. It was a one-time deal, but it demonstrated that Fuddruckers was serious about revolutionizing the burger industry. But things could never, ever be the way you expect them. Does that make you curious? Hold on. A surprise is waiting. The decline. By 2008, the financial storm hit and Fuddruckers got smacked. In 2010, they had to file for bankruptcy. Sad day. But don't get hasty and click away. We will reveal the reason soon in this video. Fuddruckers had to shut down 24 of their joints, even in DC. It was a tough time. In late 2010, Fuddruckers changed hands again when Luby outbid Tabistock with a winning bid of $61 million. The acquisition of Fuddruckers and Kukuru was finalized, though not without some controversies with previous franchise owners over the use of the Fuddruckers brand name. Not only this, there were many other reasons that contributed to their decline with these burger experts. Reasons behind the decline. One, ownership turmoil. To understand this, let's go back to the beginning. Fuddruckers had a stable start with its founder crafting delicious burgers and creating a buzz. But then came the ownership shuffle, and it was like passing the torch in a relay race. Only nobody seemed to run faster. First up was Magic Restaurants Incorporated. They took the reins in 1980. They had grand visions of expanding Fuddruckers across the nation. It sounded like a solid plan, but soon financial struggles started knocking on the door. Moreover, the acquisition of Fuddruckers by Luby's played a role in Fuddruckers' decline. Luby's faced financial and operational challenges when they took over Fuddruckers. Instead of improving the situation, the acquisition worsened things. The initial idea behind the acquisition was to combine the strength of both brands and make operations more efficient. 
However, the reality didn't match the expectations. Fuddruckers and Lubies didn't integrate smoothly. It was like mixing two incompatible elements. And when you're in the food industry, losing your way can be a recipe for decline. Number two, unconventional growth strategies. Now, here it gets more interesting. Under Luby's ownership, Fuddruckers started throwing curveballs in the fast food industry. They did some eyebrow-raising stuff, like turning Luby's joints into Fuddruckers with drive through options. And remember Cheeseburger in Paradise? Well, they gave it a makeover and called it Fuddruckers Deluxe, trying to make it more of a sit-down dining experience. It seemed less like a solid growth plan and more like a last-ditch effort to breathe life back into Fuddruckers. Number three, trying impossible things for revival. After Luby's called it quits, Nicholas Perkins made his move. He signed a deal with Luby's to snag 13 Fuddruckers locations, previously under company ownership. This move instantly made him the big cheese, the largest franchisee in the Fuddruckers system. Now, you might wonder why Luby's went for Perkins. Well, it turns out he had some experience in the food service world. He'd been dealing with stuff like commissaries and colleges and hospitals. So Luby probably saw his background and thought, hey, this guy might be the one to rescue Fuddruckers. A few months later, Black Titan Industries made another bold move. This time, they went all in and bought the corporate structure of Fuddruckers, along with a bunch of the remaining locations. It was like doubling down on a bet, showing their commitment to rebuilding the brand. Their first major play was to announce the opening of 10 new Fuddruckers locations in mall food courts all across the good old USA. It clearly showed they wanted to breathe new life into the brand. And from what some former employees who reached out said, Perkins' plans for Fuddruckers seemed pretty positive and actually doable. So things rolled on for a while as they always had. Fuddruckers had its compact footprint and it was business as usual. And if that wasn't enough, there's the mystery of the disappearing mall food court, Fuddruckers. Willowbrook Mall confirmed they pulled the plug, but other malls had radio silence. The grand plan might have hit a roadblock, or it's at least taking a breather. Number four, huge competition. Between 2018 and 2019, while Fuddruckers experienced a disheartening 5.5% decline in sales, fast food giants like McDonald's and Burger King saw relatively stable or even increased revenues thanks to their strategic innovations and marketing campaigns. These fast food giants didn't just serve their typical fare, they went gourmet. McDonald's started offering fancy burgers, expanded their breakfast hours, and put a lot of effort into improving the quality of their ingredients. It was all about giving customers more choices and better taste. Burger King, on the other hand, didn't sit still either. They introduced new, innovative items and ran some pretty cool promotions. Their flame-grilled burgers and creative limited-time offerings attracted a lot of attention. But that's not all. Fuddruckers had to compete with Applebee's and Chili's too. These sit-down restaurants realized that people want more than just a meal. They wanted an experience. So they jazzed up their menus added healthier options, and elevated the whole dining vibe. Number five, menu and quality issues. People noticed that restaurants were running with a super lean staff. We're talking just a handful of employees, sometimes as few as three per place. And the soda options? Well, they were kind of limited. Plus, whispers began that the ingredients they were using just didn't seem up to snuff. As time passed, more red flags started to pop up. Some Fuddruckers joints were messing with their menus, like trading out beloved potato wedges for plain old fries. Customers were left scratching their heads over that one, and if you peeked at customer reviews, you'd see people grumbling about the food quality going downhill. Soda options were a bit meh, and shakes that left a lot to be desired. These negative reviews hurt the chain's reputation and made it less appealing for potential customers. Number six lawsuit. We also discovered that Fuddruckers was tangled up in lawsuits with one of their suppliers. Now that's never a good sign in the restaurant world. On top of that, word got out that Fuddruckers was shutting down some of its spots outside of Houston. That set off alarm bells about the brand's overall health. Number seven, cash flow issues. Some Fuddruckers spots ditched their credit card processing systems. Now that's something you don't see every day in the restaurant biz. 
As you'd expect, this got people wondering if there were perhaps money troubles in the chain and if the cash flow was different from what it was um, supposed to be. Eight, changing customer base. Another good reason for the decline of Fuddruckers is the change to the customer base and their needs. Customers are now increasingly looking for healthy and convenient food options. Fuddruckers burgers are known for being large and high calorie, which may not appeal to all health conscious customers. Additionally, Fuddruckers sit down dining format is not as convenient as fast food options, which may be a factor for busy consumers. Number nine, poor management decisions. We know that in the early 2000s, Fuddruckers aggressively expanded its restaurant footprint. However, the chain didn't have the infrastructure to support this expansion. As a result, many of the new Fuddruckers restaurants were poorly managed and understaffed. This led to a decline in the food quality and service, which alienated customers. Moreover, it has not invested in its restaurants in recent years. As a result, many of the chain's restaurants are outdated and need repairs. It has made the chain less attractive to customers. Number 10. Closure of Iconic Locations The closing of long-standing and well-known sites has also demonstrated the decline of Fuddruckers. Some of the reductions were part of a plan to streamline operations, but they also show how hard it was for the brand to stay profitable. Local news stories and magazines for the restaurant's business reported on the closing of particular Fuddruckers restaurants, such as the one in Houston, Texas, in 2019. So what will the future be for Fuddruckers? Well, with only 95 franchises, franchises, franchisees, with only 95 of them operating worldwide, it's pretty tough to predict the future, as anything could happen. Fuddruckers has a roller coaster graph of rise and fall, which may go up and down in the future. Now, there are a couple of possible scenarios on the horizon. Firstly, there's the chance that someone swoops in and snatches up naming rights. Fuddruckers still holds some sway overseas, which could bring in some cash. If this happens, those in charge from afar could shake things up, potentially changing the game for this once beloved burger joint. On the flip side, we can't ignore the possibility that Fuddruckers, as we know it, might just fade away into the sunset. It's sad, but true. Some of the remaining locations might have to face the harsh reality of having to shut their doors for good. It's not what any of us want, but a possibility looming out in the horizon. Do you love eating Fuddruckers burgers? Or do you even remember your last experience having one? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Oh, and consider watching the other interesting analyses from the Business Decline series.